Hello and welcome to Design Education Talks, the collaboration between New Art School and Design Didax Podcast. Our guest today is Eduardo Martres. Welcome, Eduardo. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Wonderful to have you here. So tell us about you and your work. Well, um, since uh, September last year, I'm an associate professor for practice in industrial design at uh, XJTLU, uh, Xi'an Jiaotong Liverpool University in the city of Suzhou in China, near Shanghai. Uh, XJTLU is a joint venture between the University of Liverpool from the UK and the Xi'an Jiaotong University from China. Fantastic, fantastic. So uh, you also have a very uh, corporate side to, to you. Uh, yes, well. uh, maybe, maybe I'm an atypical uh, academic at the moment because I come from the industry, basically. Um, previously, I worked around 18 years in the home appliances and consumer electronics. Um, I worked for Philips, HP, Panasonic, and Changhong in Europe, in America, and Asia. So I have the experience always from the big, uh, the big corporations in that, uh, in that industry. This is very important. So it'd be fantastic for you to tell us about the relationship of, of that side to your teaching. Yes, indeed. Um, basically, it's uh, what I'm trying to do. I try to teach students how to use the tools uh, uh, and the, the processes that we use in the, in the industry. Uh, I'm teaching especially in the last years before they graduate. So then when they graduate, they are prepared to, to go to work in the industry with the, knowing already the best practices. We have to keep in mind that uh, in China, uh, there is, as you know, a large amount of industry and the industry needs designers. So the designers have to have a very practical education. They have to be able to hit the, the ground running, as we say. Um, they have to be able to jump into the industry and be productive from, from day one. So that's why um, I'm trying to bring my experience from the industry um, so the students have that uh, practical skills that allows them to, to, to be productive for their employers from the very start. So how do you find that uh, these skills have changed during that, that time that you've been working? You mean during the 18 years of my career? Yes. How, how did you find that what is needed for the oh, students uh, to know? Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a very interesting question. A very, very many, many things, of course, have changed. So in the tools, of course, uh, you know, when I started my career, we didn't use computers to design, right? So we didn't use CAD. Uh, we were starting to use 2D CAD in my first years at Philips, then we went into, into 3D. Um, so that started at that time around 20, 25 years ago, right? Um, so in terms of tools, many, many things, especially in the 3D card. So at that time, to have to be able to visualize properly a product, we have to, to go through the whole process from the first sketch to all the 2D drawings, to all the models, to all the, the CAD generation in order to build a perfect final model to take pictures and see the product. Now the whole process can be done much shorter, all digitally, with a photorealistic render. Right? So in terms of, uh, of tools and processes, it has uh, totally changed. Now, in terms of uh, on a more broad, broad um, answer, in terms of our profession, it has also changed in terms that uh, when I started, designers were doing basically just design more in a more strict uh, sense of the word. Um, that means making a product which was aesthetically pleasing uh, and functionally sound, ergonomics and things like that. While now design, I think it has become uh, more like a business function. So it's much more and more important for designers in the industry, at least in the industry I've always worked, um, to understand about business, to understand about marketing, about finance, uh, and things like that. So it's, uh, it's, it became more recognized by business. So more designers are getting into positions of VP of design uh, at, uh, at company level. Uh, but on the other hand, that requires that designers know the language of business, basically, how to talk to business people at the same level as a marketing VP or a finance VP. So I think this is a major change that before we were a little 
detach from the business. We didn't want to know much about that. Uh, we, you know, we are the creatives, you know, those guys are the boring guys. And now <laughs> design became more integrated in the business. I myself uh, took an MBA uh, program around 15 years ago at the University of Chicago because that trend was already coming. And I thought that without that business education, I would not be able to, to reach the highest positions in the companies. That's, that's very interesting. So uh, tell us, how did you get into teaching? Um, well, it's something I always wanted to do. And actually it was my first job when I was 19 or 20 years old. I started, uh, I wanted to become a mechanical engineer basically when I started university in my home country, Uruguay. Um, and then after one, one and a half year of uh, engineering school, I realized that there were more interesting things in life than just making things to work because I also I was also interested in art and I liked the combination between uh, this between engineering and art, which in, in in some ways industrial design. And at that time in my country, the first design school opened, so I, I changed. So my first job while I was waiting to to enter the design school was to teach mathematics. I was strong in mathematics and I was uh, teaching teenagers in the last years of the, of the high school about math. So I did teaching in the many, many years ago when I was 19, 20, and maybe until I was 23, 24, or something like that. Then I haven't taught, at least not at university level, more than some speeches as a guest speaker in some universities. And now, um, I got the opportunity to finally do it. And uh, I got uh, this opportunity with HTLU here in Suchow and I thought it was a very interesting one. So that's why I'm here. Fantastic. So tell us about your research and your project. Um, well, we, um, I'm, as I said, coming from the industry, um, I'm very interested in, uh, in practical stuff. You know, in the industry, we don't have much much time, much spare time. Uh, basically, we need to be efficient. So every hour costs money, basically. And, uh, and then uh, we strive to develop tools and processes that can make our designs better using less resources, meaning human resources and time resources. So that's why um, I think in that way. And in the last, uh, well, during my whole career, but especially during the last uh, five years as a chief designer for a major Chinese consumer electronics company, Chang Hong, I developed certain tools and processes that um, function very well and, uh, and uh, allow us to achieve much better results uh, more efficiently. And now I'm doing research at the university and an ac at academic level, but based on that experience from the industry, and I'm uh, testing my, my processes from the industry with the students, and I'm also conducting research and uh, planning to present at conference and, and uh, publish at journals. Fantastic. So is it, uh, are you working on a particular set of article or a particular theme? Yes. Um, well, one is about a new model to, to understand industrial design, to analyze designs, to analyze products, uh, which would be almost impossible for me to go into detail now because I need to show some visuals to, to do that. But it's, a, let's say, a novel way to, to evaluate, to analyze design. Um, other is a design process, which is very much based on that, uh, on that analytical model. And the third one I'm working on is um, uh, a way to work on form language. So a way to analyze all the possible form languages that are available to designers. It's a tool that allows us to, to, to analyze the market in terms of which what brand is doing in terms of form language in, able to, in order to be able to design strategically as a design strategy, what type of form language we want to use in a company. That's so those cool. are the major, the major three ones I'm working at the moment, which, uh, which uh, one of them I'm planning to, to present at the conference very soon next month. Fantastic. Yeah, that's very interesting. So how can we help uh, aspiring designers and graduates have a career in the industry? in these current times? Well, I, I think the answer to that is, is very much country related. <laughs> As I said, in China, um, there are 
there is a large amount of, the, of students. Uh, the, the amount of students has, uh, has grown a lot in the last years, but the industry, as you know, is huge. And uh, there are in, I, I think there are enough vacancies for everybody. So everybody graduating, which is a decent or a good designer will have no problem to find a job in China because the huge amount of, of offerings is totally different uh, in other countries. I mean, I come from South America and in South America, the industry absorbs just maybe 10% of the graduate designers. So the other 90%, they have to open their own design studio and try to find clients or going to becoming makers, start to make design their own furniture and make it and sell it and things like that. So therefore the answer to your questions is very, very different depending on the country. I, I think, as I said, in, in China, we need to provide the students with a very practical education that allows them to, to, to apply for jobs, get the best possible job and, uh, and be productive from day one. While in other countries, uh, like as I mentioned in, in Latin America, um, the education should be more uh, entrepreneurial because 90% of the, of the graduates will not have a job in the industry. They have to open or their own design agency to do consultancy, or they have to start designing and making products. So I think we need to go more into entrepreneurship. We need to go more into uh, making things, making or getting them made, but uh, becoming a maker, a manufacturer yourself. Uh, and then in between the situation in China and the situation in Latin America, you have the situation in the US, of course, there are always a large amount of jobs. It's not that different to China in, the, in that respect. In the UK, also, especially in the consultancy, it's maybe not so much in the industry, but there are a lot of opportunities. Countries like Germany with strong industry as well. Then South Europe, like Italy, Spain, is a little more, situa the situation is more similar to South America. I mean, I, I, I suspect more than half of the designers end up opening up their own studios because they just, the industry doesn't offer so many so many jobs. So that's why the answer is, um, in general, I would go more into entrepreneurship and, um, and self-manufacturing. But in China, it's a little bit an exception because they, they have enough job for everybody. So the, the, you mean the skills you're teaching them are different and, and what you're equipping them with? Well, what I'm saying is the, the, the skills I would teach if I was teaching in Uruguay or Argentina or yeah. Brazil would be very yeah. different from what I'm teaching in China. In China, yeah. I'm teaching more for them to go directly to the industry. In Uruguay, in South America, I, I would teach them more to become entrepreneurs because that's what 90% of the students do when they graduate. And in Europe, somewhere in between. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. So if there were no limitations, would you do something different in your teaching? Um, well, um, if there were no limitations, what type of limitation are you talking about? Well, like, uh, there are always sort of structures within institutions I see. Uh, that don't always allow practitioners uh, to fully uh, express themselves. I see. Well, I have to but, say... But this uh, is just one example. Yeah. It's, not, it's not the example. It's basically right. when you go right. into an existing structure, right. uh, you might find that... Yes. Yeah. Well, the only experience I have teaching is here at XJTLU. I have to say uh, I'm very fortunate to say that uh, they have welcomed my approach to teaching and, uh, and uh, my application of the experience from the industry to my teaching. Uh, with open arms, so so basically I'm doing things in the thing in the way I think they should be done. So so not so much to uh, to be changed from what I'm doing because I I basically doing the way I think it should be done. That's wonderful. Who has inspired your teaching and your design? Who has inspired my teaching? Ooh, well. Um, I had a, a major uh, teacher master, which was when I did my master's in, uh, in Germany at the University of Essen, my mentor uh, was Stefan Lengiel. Um, he's a Hungarian who studied in Ulm, and he was the, the chair for design at that time at the University of Essen, which is very highly regarded. And uh, he, up to today, he was my, uh, my major uh, teacher, master, from whom um, I, learned, uh, I learned a lot. Um, I have others. Um, I have others. Uh, for example, at Philips, I, uh, a good friend who worked there 30 years from Colombia, Oscar Peña, now based in UK, in London. 
he was a good teacher at Philips in the industry, uh, where I also learned a lot about design. Then in America at HP, I, I was not so not learning so much about design. I was more teaching. I, uh, you know, uh, in a typical European company or maybe Japanese company or Chinese company, we have a big design center with hundreds of designers, and there are of course many more experienced than you are, and uh, and many very very uh, skilled and talented designers. Uh, from whom you can learn from. When I went to America to HP, a typical American company is divided by business. So our digital camera group had only three designers and I was the, the, the design leader. So I was, I had nobody there to learn from in terms of design. I was there more to teach to the more junior staff. But there I learned a lot about business. Uh, and I also at that time did an MBA when I was in America. Um, so I, and I also learned about a lot about engineering. So I would say in Europe with Philips, I learned a lot about design. While at HP in America, I learned a lot about business and engineering because we had, a, I was working with the marketing, with the finance and with the mechanical engineering on a daily basis. We were all sitting together. While at Philips, we were more like a, operating like a design consultancy where we were uh, detached from the Philips company in a way. So it's a very good complement, uh, the two type of, uh, uh, of company environments, let's say Philips Absolutely. and HP. Absolutely, fantastic. How can our viewers and listeners find you? Um, I think the best way is always uh, through uh, use LinkedIn. Uh, I mean, I don't use so much Facebook or Instagram, so I think LinkedIn is the, the best way to get in touch, the easiest way to get in touch with me. Great, excellent. Any last piece of advice you'd like to leave us with? Um, maybe advice for, for young designers, for students, yeah, sure. um, uh, have big dreams, follow your dreams and, uh, and be happy. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the My conversation, pleasure. Eduardo. Uh, it's great, uh, talking to you today. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Thank all, you very much best. for the invitation. Thank you.